NX18 just landed with a potentially revolutionizing way of how you use NX. And we call it Project Crystal. Let's have a look. So let me create a new NX workspace. And if you're thinking about, hey, this is NX plugins, sure, they might be cool and interesting, but I have just a PMPM workspace. Stick with me because Project Crystal is exactly helping you with that as well. But before we jump into that, let me create a new NX workspace. Let me call this Project Crystal. And I'm using PMPM here, but feel free to use whatever you like. So let's go with the React workspace. I don't choose any specific framework for now. Let's go with the monorepo. It's called React tab, Vid, Cypress. I'm just going through some of the defaults. So let's have that workspace set up. And so once this is run through, we get the workspace with the React app here that's based on Vite and here a Cypress test, which we chose to set up with that project. Now, how is Product Crystal different than just normal NX plugins? So first of all, we're still talking about the same NX plugins, but with an enhanced functionality. So when we released or worked on NX18, our main thought was like, what if the NX plugins work more like VS Code or WebStorm extensions? So think about, for instance, the Playwright plugin. If you have a Playwright test in VS Code and you have the plugin active, it will enhance your experience. It will add small buttons somewhere. It provides you with a test explorer. And so this is like small little enhanced features that help with your DX, make you more productive, but still kind of stays out of your way. You don't have to use it. Now, plugins are extremely powerful. We have been using them at large scale with big enterprises. So we still want to keep those around, but we wanted to make them more simple and easier to adopt. So if you look at the workspace here, and specifically if you look at the project JSON file in this workspace, we can see there are no targets defined. And so one of the first things that Project Crystal does, it, it automatically infers the targets for you. So let's for a second deviate to the annex JSON here at the root. And if you scroll a bit down, you will notice there's a new plugin section, which has these different plugins. So here, for instance, we have the Vite plugin that says here, these are different targets that it tries to infer with the coding names. So here's also how we could potentially change them. There's an ESLint plugin and Cypress plugin. So it really depends what type of setup we have and what plugins we are installing in here. So if we go back to our product JSON, we don't have any targets anymore in here, which first of all, reduces the size of these project JSON files tremendously. We could potentially remove them even at some point because you are already being shipped by these extensions with the defaults that are good to go. And you just customize what you really need to customize and override just those little pieces rather than overriding everything. So how can we know what targets are present if we look at a project? Well, first of all, we can run NX pro show project and the name of the project, in this case, React app. And I pass here dash dash web, so we don't get a JSON output, but rather a more visually appealing web output on the browser. And you can open these up and you will see the details of the configuration of this target uh, inside here. Now, if you have NX console installed, which I highly recommend, you get an even better experience because you see these code lens enhancements. So if you click on the, these, you will see the different targets that you can directly click. There's also these open product details, which you will also find up here. And so if you click that, you will see the same view we saw in the web view, but now directly in here. So let's have a look at these targets. First of all, it directly runs now the underlying CLI. While some of the executors from the NX plugins do some more wrapping and some logic, the NX plugins coming with Product Crystal mostly just defer to the underlying VCLI, Remix CLI, Next next CLI and so on, to make sure there it is as transparent as possible to not add any specific wrapping for that. You can also see it automatically configures the caching inputs and outputs. It defines here the output, for instance, to go to the workspace level, this apps, React app. That's usually how we set it up in an NX workspace. It also has the depends on, so the task pipeline configured. So you can see all these things are being configured for you and you don't have to worry about it basically. One other major thing now is these are now also in sync with the actual config file. So think about the Vite CLI. It runs on based on what you configure on the Vite config, obviously. It's same the Webpack CLI. Before, though, in an X, if you change, for instance, the output path of your Vite artifacts, so if I go in here in the Vite config and I go down here, there's a build property where I can configure the output path. So let me configure that to something like my custom out there. 
Now, before Nginx, you had to configure that potentially in the project JSON as well to make sure these two are in sync. Now, these are automatically being inferred by the extension, by the plugin. So you can see here how this is being automatically reflected based on the changes that we made in the Vite config. So NX now treats these configs as a single source of truth rather than some other config outside of this NX specific. Now you can run these just the same way as we did before. So we can run pmpm NX build react app or click directly in here and it would run the build. If you rerun it, it would keep caching that as well. Now you can also add new plugins to your workspace. And we added a new command called add. So you can now run pmpm dlx nx at latest at nx next to add the next plugin to your workspace. So once the plugin is installed, add command will automatically add it to the package JSON, of course, so the next plugin as well as the next version itself. And it would also configure a new next plugin in the nx JSON. And with that, now we have the generators again available, which we either invoke over the CLI or we just run here new next app Let's call here next app directories apps next app. And let me also generate here, for instance, cyber playwright test. I can leave the rest as is. And so what we get is again here a next app. We get a, a playwright setup. And that next app also gets its target automatically inferred as the other products in our workspace. So given we lowered the actual footprint of these NX configurations in the project itself by reading directly from the actual config files, so from read or next or remix, it is also easier to adopt that in an existing reality. For instance, if I go in here, I have here a PMPM monorepo, which doesn't have NX installed at all. I have here a Vite CLI based React setup and a remix app that got generated by the remix CLI. And so again, as usual, even before, I can just add NX to such a PMPM workspace by using NX at latest in it. And it will ask me a couple of different questions. Now, the difference now is it will ask you also about adding potential plugins. You can still opt out, remove all the plugins and just start by simple NX that invokes your package JSON scripts. But I can, for instance, go ahead and say, I want to add here the Vite plugin. Or I could also later on just use the NX add command as we have just seen. So if I set this up, let's go ahead to wrap this. And once that is set up, we will see now an X being installed. We also have the Vite plugin because that's what we chose to be installed as well. We have the plugins config in here. What an X also did in the package JSON is it replaced the package JSON scripts because we opted in for that. We can also opt out for that. The main advantage here is if you want to keep using your PMPM uh, or package JSON scripts basically here, now those Vite build is being piped through NX and so therefore is being cached automatically. But given these things are already inferred here via our plugin that we have seen before, even in this PMPM monorepo workspace, we could even go ahead and get rid of these entirely because NX already manages those. So again, all the things are in sync. If I go here in my Vite plugin and add here a build out there, this still works the same way meaning that in here, this will be automatically reflected on the build config. The build direct again, just defers to the VCLI, but also configures all the caching for me. So now I could just go ahead and run NX build react Vite. You can see it runs the dependent projects because that build pipeline got configured automatically. If I rerun, obviously it will cache it automatically for me. And so these things are already being handled by the plugin, giving me some advantage there. Again, as mentioned, you can always revert back to your custom scripts if you'd like to. So Project Result does not only allow us to now add plugins just as for a single project, for instance, in a PMPM monorepo, as in this case for React Vite, to enhance just that. But given we now directly read from the actual config files as a single source of truth, it also opens up for a much easier migration path for someone at once to go, for instance, for a monorepo, to a more NX plugin based workspace. And so this is just the beginning. We still have to refine quite some edge cases, but what is already possible now is I could go ahead and copy this. I go back to my workspace that we've seen before that I generated with an X and I paste the project into this workspace. Now there's obviously some gotchas here in a sense that we have a shared UI in the original project, which we don't have in here. So let me just clean it up here to make sure we don't get any compilation error. 
Clearly, this is also a very simple project. I just literally generated a new project with the VCLI. So in a real world project, you might have some more dependencies that you might need to adjust, install, or move around. But I want to go even a step further in here because this project here uses a root level workspace-wide single version policy. So there's just one package JSON and everything is hosted in one node modules, which is the way NX often goes with. You can still use, as you've seen, the, the multi-version setup, but let's go a bit more into the depths here and just remove the package JSON entirely and convert it to a setup that matches the other reality in here. So I'm actually going to use and create a product JSON file called this React Vite. So we're more in line with how this workspace specifically is being managed. And now as I add this project JSON file, NX is able to identify this as a project in the workspace and you can see how it already starts inferring the targets. So if I open up here the project details, you can see we have the build, which uses Vite, which relies on the actual config for the specific one here, which in this case has not been overwritten and so therefore just goes to the local project directory here. It also configured obviously all the caching that we need and so now I can actually go ahead and run NX build React V in this new workspace here and it would just work. I can also serve it. So you can just go ahead and use the serve target that NX generated for me and it would serve up the Vite app. So you can see how potentially the whole migration scenario is much, much easier in such a setup. Now we, again, as mentioned, we will work on some more utilities to help with such migration into existing workspaces because that's a high priority for many of our clients. Now one, there's one more thing that I wanted to show you because the plugins don't just necessarily configure the input and output, but it could potentially go further. And one specific case that we have been wanting already for a long time is to optimize end-to-end -end tests. So if we look, let's take here the example of the next app here, but we could also just use the Cypress one here. So we have a Playwright config. And if you open up here the project details for the Playwright setup, we'll see we have an end-to-end -end test, but the NX plugin also inferred a, a target that runs the Playwright with a filter on a single spec file. And so what that means is if I add a second one, so let me just create a new one here, call this example two. Let's go in here and say here example two. So we have two of them. Let me go now to the product details again. And now you can see we have two of them being detected automatically. Now, why is that so interesting? Because the end-to-end -end part is usually a huge block or very often a huge block that is really critical on CI because you have to run it through in one go. They're brittle, they're sm they slow. And even if you want to distribute on different machines, it's kind of hard because you always have that big single block. Now, given that an X is able to automatically infer those single files and therefore generate multiple targets dynamically for you, you can basically run something like this. There's a specific end-to-end dash -end CI target now. Now I'm running it with parallel one to not get in conflict with like the actual ports that are being spin up by the application behind the scenes. But you can see now how it runs first for that example spec TS, then the example two spec TS, and so on. So this is a game changer because this in combination with a feature which is called NX agents on NX cloud, we can now distribute these fine grained file level playwright or Cypress tests across as many machines as you'd like. And we've seen some really good results there, like test setups going from like 90 minutes of end-to-end -end tests down to 10 minutes, which can obviously be a huge, huge benefit in terms of cost savings and speed if you work like in a larger environment. So I hope you like this. These are some just some of the beginnings because we literally just launched Product Crystal a couple days ago. So definitely follow us on our various channels because there's more to come down the road.